How you going everybody? A while ago I picked up the uh, Fujifilm X-H1 primarily to use as uh, a work camera because I actually get paid photo work, photojournalism mainly and uh, I've sort of held back a bit from doing a review on this camera until I uh, used it in work conditions so it was actually uh, earning me money, real world work stuff. Uh, I didn't want to just pick it up and take some hobby shots or whatever and then uh, pontificate. I wanted to see how it would go in my real world work. I've got a uh, job, I've got to go out to the Yarra Glen Rodeo or Rodeo, however you pronounce it. Depends uh, where you're born I suppose. And cover that for local uh, media. So the rig I've got today is the, the X-H1 with the 18 to 135. Now I know Fujifilm make longer lenses but uh, they're very expensive and for the amount of times I need a long lens I couldn't really justify the price of you know 1800 Australian dollars just to buy a, uh, a nice long lens from Fujifilm. So the 18 to 135 is what I'll be using and uh, I'll be shooting uh, bucking broncos and uh, bull riding and all that sort of stuff with it uh, later today. So I'll be able to find out just how good this thing is. Uh, it'll be testing things like uh, the autofocus, uh, the uh, quickness of uh, how I can get onto the subject to take my shot. Uh, the IBIS, I've already checked that out, that will work fine. doesn't really matter in these situations because I'll be shooting very, very fast shutter speeds. Uh, at least a thousandth of a second to capture that action. So uh, the IBIS won't really come into play much at all. But uh, it'll be a test of how I can handle this camera and uh, the lens combination in an action setting. I'm taking two cameras with me, as I usually do. And the second one won't be a Fujifilm, even though uh, I've got my X-T2 and I can put numerous lenses on that. I'm filming with the X-T2 at the moment. As I mentioned before about the long lens, I did need a long lens occasionally. Not very often, but occasionally. So, as I said in another video, I solved that problem by getting a bridge camera. Ooh, professional using a bridge camera. Well, yeah. Uh, after some research, I picked up this Lumix FZ uh, 2500 and it's got the uh, zoom range here 24 to 480 uh, on this lens and it's got uh, the one inch sensor inside this. So I'll be using this as my long lens when I need it uh, in today's shoot. So between the two cameras, the uh, Fujifilm X-H1 and the Lumix bridge camera, I'll be able to cover the event and uh, after I've shot, I'll come back, process the pictures, see what they're like and show you some of them. Okay, and give my, uh, give my review of just how good the X-H1 is in a real world working situation as a working camera to earn money, not just to muck around with as a hobby. Okay, well I'm at the Eric Land Rodeo, or Rodeo, and uh, there's, it's absolutely packed. If you see around here, there's people everywhere. Great events, getting some wonderful shots. I am using my uh, Fujifilm X-H1 and the Lumix uh, FZ 2500. And uh, I'm halfway through the event, and so far I'm finding the X-H1 is taking absolutely blistering pictures. And uh, turns out I'm not need needing the extra links that the Lumix had uh, for this event after all. The file sizes the X-H1 puts out are uh, brilliant. I can, uh, you know, crop in and uh, use uh, the, uh, the main action in the picture. Don't forget, it's it's you have to think of the end use. The end use of these is going in newspapers, uh, sort of low uh, 
uh, print quality. It's not going to be framed and as an artwork on the wall. It's going to be printed on newsprint. It's uh, probably 200 dpi. But uh, yeah, I'll pop some pictures up now and uh, then get back to work. Ciao. Okay, well, just back from the rodeo or rodeo or whatever you call these things and uh, processing the pictures and uh, got some very good ones to show you just to show you the difference between the uh, Lumix FZ2500 and uh, the Fujifilm X-H1 which is my main camera and as we go through them I'll just explain uh, the good points and bad points about uh, the cameras what worked and what didn't first up is uh, this picture which was taken with the Lumix FZ 2500 at about 340 mil and and that's in 35 mil terms all the time I'm saying you know, what uh, the length length was it's in 35 mil terms just so you are familiar with it and what I found was uh, there's the dog barking in the background must have visitors what I found is with the Lumix when you want the reach uh, and the full length of the zoom you no longer can control manually your shutter speeds and things but when you put it on uh, S for uh, shutter priority you don't get the zoom now that is really really strange way to set your camera up uh, the Lumix is very good at some things but I've found that it's not good at fast action sport when you need that long reach okay you can either have the long reach or you can have the manual controls you can't have both at the same time so after taking that first shot and finding that uh, I was stuck on it deciding what shutter speed to use and I had no control over that I just uh, gave up on the Lumix it just wasn't going to do it because I couldn't get a fast enough shutter speed and then keep the zoom so I put the Lumix away and all the shots after that were taken with the uh, Fujifilm X-H1 including this one and this goes to show the uh, amount of detail you can get out of the files from the X-H1 this was at 118 mil length and I kept the shutter speed at uh, 1 1600th of a second throughout the rest of the shoot tried to keep the f-stop around 5, 6 and uh, a low ISO it was an overcast day started at uh, 640 and as the uh, day went on and the evening approached I just bumped up the ISO a bit just to compensate but here you can see the the freezing of the action and the great detail the musculature of the horse and all the individual hairs in the tail and everything it, it just came up absolutely brilliantly so very happy with that then I was taking some shots of uh, trying to freeze action, you know, uh, getting uh, the dirt flying up from the ground and that sort of thing. So uh, the fast shutter speed on the on the X-H1 really helped there. This one here is, I, I, I love this one, it shows the uh, arena cl uh, clowns in action. And their job is to, when the rider falls off the horse or the bull, their job is to distract the horse or the bull from uh, attacking the rider when he's down. So they put themselves in very precarious positions. And you can see here the guy on the left, here the hooves of the bull are just missing his head. Uh, so their bravery is amazing. They're, they're just fearless, these guys. And to capture that action actually happening, uh, timing was, was uh, very important. Another one in a similar vein, the rider's just come off, he's sort of upside down on the ground there. One of the rodeo clowns is moving in to distract the bull. And uh, just, yeah, to be able to, again, it's all about the story. You need to be able to tell the story in photojournalism. That's more important than, than uh, perfect composition and all that sort of stuff. The reader has to see the story that the picture's about. Another one here, this is at 132mm. Uh, I was using the 18 to 135 on the X-H1 uh, so I'm almost at full length there this horse and rider were way down the other end of the arena uh, but the files 
uh, so good out of the XH1 that I was able to zoom, you know, crop right in, get rid of all the extraneous uh, area of the photo, get right in on the action. This one here, I've got to be aware when I'm taking uh, photos of events for media that there's all sorts of things happening. And I had to get this photo because it could have been a story in its own right. This rider of a bucking bronco came off, but his hand got caught in the, the saddle or stirrup area uh, of, on the horse, and he was dragged all the way around the arena with his bucking bronco and uh, banging up against the metal fences, the barriers there. And I was able to get a picture of, of the, the pain and everything writ large on his face uh, as the, uh, the other riders came in to stop the horse. I was very happy with that picture because uh, it may have been a story all on its own and to capture that, to add to uh, the written story, is what photojournalism is all about. And the Fujifilm X-H1 handle that perfectly. This one here, uh, this guy has uh, been on the backing Bronco for the allotted 10 seconds so he didn't get thrown off and the expression on his face, the exhaustion, um, uh, the, the physical uh, effort required is is there on his face and you think 10 seconds not long but when you're on a bucking bronco trying to get rid of you off its back that takes a lot of effort and uh, it just shows up there on his face now this last shot I'll show you is what I call the money shot this is the shot I the best shot of the Rodeo that I was able to get not only is the bull getting some serious air here but the rider and the bull are emulating the picture, the big billboard at the back for the Rodeo. And uh, it's timing and luck here. I was lucky that this happened right in front of uh, the billboard and I was at the right angle to be able to capture them both together. So a bit of luck there, but also timing. Uh, I was fairly aware that it was happening so i'm taking photos like crazy then when i went through the camera later i saw this shot and i thought absolutely brilliant this is the shot of the rodeo as far as i'm concerned so extremely happy with that shot so i'm very happy with the way the fujifilm x-h1 uh, handled that work situation this is this is actual uh, paid work that this thing has to do and it delivered the goods i was very also very happy with the 18 to 135 this is uh my go-to uh, rig for photojournalism for the papers because uh, the camera's great, the range of the lens is very good and both uh, weather resistant. So I, I can take this out in uh, all sorts of weather and not really worry. Uh, some years ago I, I had Nikon I was taking out on a shoot and it was a bit drizzly that day and I got through the shoot and then went home and the camera had carked it. Uh, you, you do need a camera that uh, is a bit weather resistant, a bit of protection there. And this setup, this body and this lens will cover just about everything I need to do with uh, photojournalism and I don't have to worry about it. So all in all, the X-H1 handled the, the shoot uh, magnificently. With the extra battery pack, I didn't have to worry uh, about running out. It's got the... Uh, the two card slot here so I've got backups I don't have to worry about that uh, this is a brilliant camera for my use and it didn't let me down it did everything it needed to do uh, didn't miss a beat and yeah very very happy with this it's almost like it's purpose-built for photojournalism this thing so um, all in all brilliant stuff I'd recommend it I know there's uh, other Fuji's coming out uh, if and when I can get my hands on them, I'll check them out. But so far, this there's nothing in here on this X-H1 that makes me think, oh, I wish it was a bit more here or a bit different there or had this extra thing. Uh, this does the job really well. So there you go. This will last me quite a while, I think, and get quite a few uh, stories photographed for me. Now, in case you're wondering if uh, the Panasonic Lumix FZ2500 is a bit of a lame duck, because of that zoom thing, you know, where you use the full zoom, you can't control your shutter speeds and everything. And if you want to control them, you can't reach the full zoom. It's a, it's a very weird system. Uh, but then it is a bit of an older camera. 
However, for other sorts of shoots, uh, it's really good on macro, it's good on video, it's good for normal photography. Now, as I was driving home from the rodeo or radio or whatever you call it, the sun was setting and because of the, uh, the bushfires in Victoria and New South Wales, a bit of smoke haze around and it made a beautiful red, uh, orange and red sunset. So this first picture is of uh, a sort of a wide shot of the sunset taken with the Fujifilm X-H1 and I just wanted to capture all the cloud and the tone of the colours and everything and the, uh, the X-H1 did a great job there. And this second pic is me using the full range of the zoom on the, Fuji on the uh, Lumix FZ2500 uh, and capturing that beautiful red ball of the sun there uh, right at, uh, at sunset. So there you go, it can take good photos, you just have to be aware of its limitations and uh, use its strengths, okay? So I won't be getting rid of it, it's still good for some things, but it's not an all-round camera, okay? Whereas uh, the Fujifilm X-H1 did a much better job uh, handling just about everything you can throw at it. Alright, so whatever camera you've got, take it for a walk and have fun. See you next time.